Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's continue with acute myeloid leukemias. So in acute myeloid leukemias, here we have already discussed about acute lymphoblastic leukemias, ALL is completed. Now we are going to discuss about A. ML that is acute myeloblastic leukemias or acute myeloid leukemias. So what exactly is AML sir? Simple you already know it. It's neoplastic accumulation of blasts. Okay neoplastic accumulation of blasts. How much? More than 20%. Okay more than 20% neoplastic accumulation of the blast. Which blast sir? It's a myeloid blast. So the myeloid blast or the myeloblasts are getting accumulated. Okay, the myeloid blast or the myeloid stem cell is getting accumulated within the bone marrow. You know what are the consequences? What are the consequences? So crowding out. Acute means in a very short time, in a very rapid phase, the bone marrow is getting crowded out, which is going to lead to the pancytopenias, leading to anemia, thrombocytopenia, and neutropenia. You know it. But my question is. How to differentiate an AML from ALL? How to differentiate AML from the ALL? You know it, ALL cells, okay, acute lymphoblastic cells, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL lymphoblasts, these cells are going to be positive with the TDT. Okay, this DNA polymerase, TDT is going to be present only in the lymphoblasts. But how to identify the myeloid stem cells? Okay, how to identify the myeloblasts? is myeloblasts are going to show positivity for a chemical which is called as a myeloperoxidase which is also called as MPO for oxygen dependent killing you know it the neutrophils they have this myeloperoxidase okay with which it can kill the uh, microbes okay the phagocytosis oxygen uh, sorry uh, after phagocytosis there is oxygen dependent killing right for that this myeloperoxidase is required okay sometimes this myeloperoxidase is going to crystallize it gets crystallized within the blast and this crystallized form of myo myeloperoxidase is called as our rods so my question is how to identify the myeloblast you know it so we can identify the myeloblast based on the myeloperoxidase if myeloperoxidase is positive or r rods are positive then we can say yes this cell is a myeloblast okay now see look at here look at this classification which we have done see the myeloblast okay it can form erythroblast it can form uh, the myeloid blast the myeloid stem cell it can form the erythroblast myeloblast monoblast or megakaryoblast so all these are these are all immature cells okay all these are the immature cells so aml okay aml is further subclassified into different types based on which type of immature cell is getting proliferated whether it's the erythroblast that is getting proliferated okay or is it the myeloblast that is getting proliferated or the monoblast that is getting proliferated or the megakaryoblast that is getting proliferated based on the type of cell that is getting proliferated the AML is of different types and based on the cytogenetic abnormality okay based on the cytogenetic abnormality also AML is classified into different types for example now first let's discuss about the uh, types of AML see for easy understanding purpose let's try to understand like this ALL is of how many types? ALL. ALL is of two types. That is BALL and it is TALL. It's of two types. BALL and TALL. BALL in the children, TALL in the adults. Okay, the, the teenagers. Okay. In the same way, AML is also classified into different different types. Here I am going to discuss about the main ones. Main ones which are needed for your exam. So based on the cytogenetic abnormality. Okay. The first type is called as acute, means blast, you know it, promyelocytic, promyelocytic leukemia. Okay, acute promyelocytic leukemia. Sir, what exactly is acute promyelocytic leukemia? It's a type of AML. Okay, it's coming under AML only. 
okay it's a mature proliferation it's a mature proliferation and neoplastic accumulation of the myeloid blasts okay the cells which are coming under the myeloid lineage so when we will have this acute pro see in the name itself it's a pro myelocytes so definitely myeloid lineage now what's the cytogenetic abnormality here let me write here cytogenetic abnormality the cytogenetic abnormality is a translocation translocation of 15 is to 17 15 17 translocation is going to cause acute promyelocytic leukemia okay sir now because of this translocation what's the problem okay translocation happened in the cell which cell myeloid blast so what happened so there is disruption of or damage disruption of retinoic acid x receptor okay the retinoic acid x receptor which was present on the cell surface uh, which, which is present in the cells now it is disrupted it's not functioning okay retinoic acid x receptor disruption so because of this retinoic acid x, x receptor disruption the cells are not getting matured the cell is not getting matured it's a pro myelocyte it's not a myelocyte it's a pro myelocyte okay the cell maturation is hampered so no cell maturation which means the cells are going to stay in the blastic stage itself the cells are staying as a blasts because of the cytogenetic abnormality that is a 15-17 translocation disruption to the retinoic acid receptor okay now if you look at the cells acute promyelocytes inside how to identify this is the acute promyelocyte so the cells inside them yes of course there is a nucleus now a very prominent punched out nucleoli is going to be present prominent punched out nucleoli okay prominent punched out nucleoli is going to be present and not only that in the cytoplasm you can see very high number of r rods okay and this is the type of amyl in which you have the maximum number of r rods see these cells these are the immature cells they are very fragile cells in the circulation they are going to get ruptured and this r rods that's going to leak this myeloperoxidase that's going to leak can activate the clotting process that can lead to okay disseminated intravascular coagulation so very very important point the person who is having this acute promyelocytic leukemia is at a risk of getting disseminated intravascular coagulation okay this is a point which i want you to know now how to treat this the treatment is with a drug called as atra okay atra what exactly is atra all trans retinoic acid so all trans retinoic acid atra this is the drug which is going to go and bind with the the retinoic acid receptor that's the disrupted receptor and going to make the cells mature again to a certain degree so acute promyelocytic leukemia first it's a type of aml based on the cytogenetic uh, like abnormalities aml is classified into different types the most important type is acute promyelocytic leukemia according to a different type of classification it is called as a m3 okay just remember m3 type of aml okay but acute promyelocytic leukemia translocation um 15 17 leading to the disruption of uh, disruption of the retinoic acid x receptor so there is a no maturation of the cells into the proper myelocytes and proper granulocytes maturation is not happening so how to identify these cells these cells are going to have a positivity for the myeloperoxidase you can have the maximum number of r rods and also prominent punched out nuclei is going to be present inside the nucleus and the treatment for this condition is all trans retinoic acid okay next type of aml is acute monocytic leukemia okay acute monocytic leukemia sir see in the name it there is a monocytic but don't confuse it's not these are not the sites these are the blasts so let me write here neoplastic accumulation of of what monoblasts so which cells are said these look here see these are the monoblasts so this immature cells are getting proliferating are uh, getting proliferated and accumulated more than 20 percent so these are also immature cells, megakaryoblast, myeloblast, erythroblast, 
these are all immature cells when these immature cells are getting accumulated inside the bone marrow then you can say these are the amls all these are the aml which type of aml if monoblasts are getting accumulated you can say it is acute monoblastic leukemia if the precursor cells are the myeloblast pro myeloblast if pro myeloblast pro myeloblast the pro myelocytes you can say the name we are using it as a site but it's not a site it's a blast site means mature cell blast means immature cell so acute pro myelocytic leukemia means it's a neoplastic accumulation of the myeloblasts only okay so let me write here now we are discussing about acute monocytic leukemia according to different classification it is coming under m5 type of aml m5 type of aml acute monocytic leukemia this is a neoplastic accumulation of the mon monoblast more than 20 percent in the bone marrow the one important super high yielding point is if there is a person who is having this acute monoplastic leukemia he is going to have a gum infiltration gum hypertrophy kind of thing you, whenever you look at his gums it will look like a hypertrophy so gum involvement gums okay so there will be infiltration into gums is going to be seen the next type of aml is acute mega karyoblastic leukemia okay acute mega karyoblastic leukemia according to different type of classification it is coming under m7 m7 type of aml so acute mega karyoblastic leukemia and the name itself it is there so neoplastic accumulation of acute means blast the neoplastic accumulation of mega karyoblast within the bone marrow more than 20 percent as simple as that now point which i wanted to know is see this acute mega karyoblastic leukemia is the most common leukemia it's the most common leukemia in patients of down syndrome before the age of 5 so before 5 years the patients the down patient before 5 years the down patients are at risk of getting a aml which type of aml acute mega karyoblastic leukemia but after the age of 5 after 5 the patients are at risk of getting all okay acute lymphoblastic leukemia after 5 it is all before 5 it is aml okay as simple as that that's the point which i want you to know so down syndrome association is important now one more point which i want you to know sir the patient is having neoplastic proliferation okay the blasts are getting proliferated but less than 20 percent now okay the neoplastic proliferation is there less than 20 percent it is okay less than 20 percent it is more than 20 percent you can say this is an acute leukemia but usually blasts are somewhere around like you know, three to five percent okay but if you have blasts less than 20 percent then you are going to call them as myelodysplastic syndromes myelodysplastic syndromes these are not acute leukemias okay they can turn into acute, acute leukemias yes there is a possibility that this is myelodysplastic syndromes they can turn into acute leukemias but if the blast count if it is less than 20 percent in the bone marrow then you can call it as myelodysplastic syndromes okay so they can progress into acute leukemias okay so who will get this acute uh, myelodysplastic syndromes see the patients who are exposed to uh, radiation okay the patients uh, who like you know who have exposed to radiation or radiotherapy okay radiotherapy or some alkylating agent so prior exposure so there is a prior exposure to radiotherapy or alkylating agent yes there is a possibility of myelodysplastic syndromes okay where the blast count is not more than 20 percent but less than 20 percent okay the mild symptoms are going to be seen in the future they can progress into acute leukemias okay so with this we have completed the acute leukemias in the next video we'll be discussing about chronic leukemias hope the video is helpful thank you